Hello everyone, teachers, students, pupils, and parents. Welcome to another episode of I Teach You Learn Tutorial Lesson. This is brought to you by Teacher Joseph Riculio. We're going to discuss one of the basic lessons in English, and that is how do we form sentences according to moods, uses, and functions. It's very important to really identify its uses and functions and moods because there are different kinds of sentences, and today we're going to discuss each one of them. Okay, but before that, let us first define what a sentence is. What is a sentence? How do we know that this group of words is a sentence? Now, a sentence is a set or group of words that contain a subject and a predicate in order to express a complete thought. So there must be a complete thought. And in order for that to have a complete thought, it should contain a subject and a predicate. During my previous lesson, we defined what a subject is, what a predicate is, because this is actually the verb. But today, let us have a recap of those. So what is a subject? A subject is the topic of the sentence, all right, that is being talked about, or shall I say, the doer of the action, okay? Since it is the doer of the action, it is either a noun or a pronoun. We also defined this during my previous lesson, that a noun is a part of speech that names a person, place, thing, event, or idea. Or, in the absence of noun, pronouns will take over because pronoun is a part of speech that substitutes or replaces the nouns. So that is a subject. A predicate is what is said about the subject or the one talking about the subject or the recipient of the action, all right? Or the action being done. And because of that, it starts with the verb and other parts of the sentence after the verb okay so that is a sentence so there are several lessons concerning sentences because you know sentence is very important in order for us to form a paragraph it consists a sentence okay there are several lessons these are the lessons sentence moods uses and functions we have sentence diagramming we also have sentence pattern it's something to do with sentence diagramming we we'll also have run-ons, and we will discuss this one of these days, like the difference between run-ons and fragments. And then we also have sentence structure, which will be our next lesson to talk about. But today, we're going to focus on sentence moods, uses, and functions. Okay, now there are four kinds of sentences according to moods, uses, and functions. Let us start with declarative sentence from the word declare. You are declaring something. So how do we form it? We form it by using the subject and the predicate, simply the two parts, okay? And these are actually the function words, huh? subject and predicate, okay? And what is its use and function? It's very important to, to know the uses and the functions of each kind of sentences according to moods, uses, and functions, okay? That's the most important thing. Just like us, we should identify our function, our use in this world, okay? So declarative sentence is used to state information, okay? And this information can be a fact or an opinion. So what is the difference between a fact or opinion? A fact is true, real, um, understood by all, not debatable, agreeable. So what is true to me is also true to you. What is true to others is true to all, meaning you cannot debate on that. It is globally, universally understood. Okay, what about opinion? Opinion is somehow true and not true. It depends on your belief or your perspective. So there are times that what is true to me might not be true to you. What is true to him or her might not be true to everyone. So that is opinion. And opinion varies depending on your beliefs, perfect perspectives, and your standards in life, okay? It also tells about your feeling, your uh, outlook, okay? The punctuation to use here is simply period, okay? So we have here the example. Let's have the example. 
we quickly update our computer systems. Okay, we have only six words for this sentence. Okay, so let's break it down. Subject is, of course, we, which is a pronoun, since it doesn't say a, com a name of person, a common name or a concrete name of persons. It's we that substitutes everyone. Okay, so we have here the predicate. The predicate is quickly update our computer systems. So these five words have different functions, and let us identify it, okay? Quickly is an adverb. Basically, that is adverb of manner because it ends in ly. As we talk about adverbs, we will be talking about different kinds of adverb as well. So this quickly is an example of adverb of manner. Okay, we have here update, which is basically our verb because it tells an action. Everything that you do is a verb. And then we have our, which is a determiner. Now there are, I put their determiner, which is a possessive, because there are different kinds of determiners. We have uh, article determiners, we have numerical determiners. So when you say articles, we have a, uh, an, and the. We have the numerical determiner with one, two, three. We also have indefinite determiner. We also have relative, indefinite determiner like some, uh, few, uh, each. So that's indefinite determiner. We also have relative determiner with that, those, these, and, you know, those are actually determiners, okay? And then we have computer. Computer is a noun, but this time it does not function as a noun. Basically, computer is a noun, but it does not function as a noun. We call that noun modifier. And when we talk about modifier, this is an adjective, okay? What kind of systems? It's computer. So an adjective answers the question, which one and what kind, all right? So we'll be talking that as well. And then, of course, systems is a noun, which is basically a direct object, okay? Because it answers the question, what? Now, there are several functions of nouns. There are actually eight of them, okay? And these functions have different uses, all right? So we should discuss that as well. I hope that we will know how to learn how to use, I hope that we will know how to use these functions in our sentence constructions. It's very important. Now, if we combine these together, our computer systems, we call this a phrase. And because it is a direct object, we call that objective phrase or objectival phrase, another term for that, okay? And it answers the question, what? It's called a phrase because it's a group of words, but it doesn't say a complete thought, okay? So that is declarative sentence. Let's proceed now to number two, and that is imperative sentence, okay? Imperative sentence is simply forming its sentence by having a predicate phrase, okay? So predicate phrase, it starts with the subject. And why is it said so? Because its function is only giving uh, an order, a command, a request, or an instruction, Okay, so if you are commanded by somebody, requested, or ordered by somebody, that's imperative sentence. The punctuation word mark to use here is also period. Now, what is the difference between imperative sentence and declarative sentence? Let's find it out later. Okay, let's have the example first. Submit your answers now. Okay, so submit, it starts with a verb because it commands something. All right, unlike declarative sentence, it starts with a subject. So that's the difference. It starts with a subject for declarative sentence. For imperative, it starts with a verb because you are commanded by someone else. Okay, let's break it down. Subject is imaginary. So basically, since you're requested by someone else, you are commanded or given instruction for someone else, that's simply you as the recipient of the sentence or the doer of the action. But that is imaginary, okay? So this is our predicate. Submit your answers now. Okay, so let's um, identify its function. So submit is our verb because this is something to do with an action. Your is another determiner, and that is again a possessive. And then answers is direct object, it's a noun, and it functions as direct object because it answers the question, what is to be submitted? And that is answers. Now is another adverb, and this time it is an adverb of time. And basically, if we're talking about our phrase, we have your answers now, that is an objective phrase, because it answers the question, 
what. All right, so that is imperative sentence. Let us proceed now to number three, and that is interrogative sentence. From the word interrogate, you are questioning. Now, there are three forms and structures of interrogative sentence. Number one is the WH, which has five WH and one H, and that is what we call what, when, where, who, and why, and how. That's six all in all. And we call this open-ended question. Why it's called open-ended question? Because you are going to provide, you know, validation to your answers. If you are asked with a WH, you have to validate it, provide textual evidence, provide your answers. Okay, this time let's have yes or no. Yes or no is inseparable with a yes or no, simply. You just have to say yes, you just have to say no. Okay, how do we form that? By using a um, verb at the beginning of the sentence and then subject and other parts of the sentence. We will have examples later. And of course, tag question. Okay, these interrogative sentences have another, you know, a separate lesson because I have to specify and elaborate WH open ended question, yes, no question, which is closed ended question, and of course, tag question. Okay, its use and function is simply asking a question. And the punctuation to use is question mark. So we will have examples for each form and structure. So number one is WH questions. We have, what do you plan to do in summer? So it starts with WH and ended with a question mark. Number two, we have yes, no question. Are you planning to visit your parents? And number three is tag question. Our teacher discusses the lesson well, doesn't he or she? Again, I have a separate lesson for this because we are going to elaborate you know, the structure, the form, the functions, and the use, and its, you know, formation. Okay, so for now, we'll have just this example. We'll not elaborate and break it down. Okay, next. Number four is exclamatory. So from the word exclaim, so it states an intense feeling or emotion. So how do we form it? It is similar to declarative sentence, but it ends with exclamation point, since it expresses intense emotion or Feeling. So that is its use and function. The punctuation mark to use is exclamation point. Okay, that's the symbol there. Okay, let's have the example. Congratulations, you made it. Or congratulations, you made it. So you see, there are two ways in how to write um, exclamatory sentences. The first one is your um, words that exclaim, then separated with a comma, and then your sentence. And then exclamation point. Or another one is the, the word which express a strong feeling or emotion with an exclamation point, And then your sentence, then period. So that's the two ways on how to write exclamatory sentences. So let's break it down. So congratulations is actually a noun, okay? And this word expresses praise for an achievement or good wishes on a special occasion. If somebody would say, congratulations, congrats, meaning you achieve something. You make your proud. You make your parents proud. Or you make yourself proud. <laughs> or you make others proud. Or whoever that is, okay? And we have here the subject, which is you. It's a pronoun. And predicate is made it, okay? Which starts with a verb and other parts of the sentence. So let's have made is a verb, which tells an action. And it is a pronoun, which is a direct object. So you see, a pronoun as well has similar function of a noun. So if a noun has direct object, pronoun also has its direct object. Because, you know, pronoun is a substitute of a noun. So they have similar functions. Okay. And that answers the question, what? Okay, similar thing, right? Okay, at this point, I guess you already learned what are the different kinds of sentences according to moods, uses, and functions? Let's try the following sentences. What you're going to do is identify the moods, uses, and functions of the following sentences below. So I have here five sentences. Number one, plants need water and sunlight to grow and survive. Number two, have you forgotten that today is mom's birthday? Oh no, I miss the school bus. Number four, I'm thankful of your presence. And number five, turn the lights off. Before you click to the next video, pause for a moment and try to answer it and check if your answers are correct. So here we go, our answers. Number one, declarative. Plants need water and sunlight to grow and survive. 
This is actually a fact because it is understood by all, and no one can debate it. Number two is, have you forgotten that today's mom's birthday? Well, that is interrogative because that is a yes-no question, all right? Number three, oh no, I miss the school bus. They have exclamator. I was reminded by, you know, and Curtis, oh no, <laughs> oh no, I miss the school bus. That is exclamatory because of the exclamation point and it expresses strong feeling or emotion. Number four, I am thankful of your presence. That is another declarative. This is actually opinion. Number five is turn the lights off. This is imperative because it commands you to do something. It requests or gives you instruction. All right. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in, students, teachers. I hope that you learned something and enjoy learning. Hope to see you on my next I Teach You Learn tutorial lesson. Now, if you have not subscribed my channel, please click the button below, then like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much, and see you. Bye-bye.